नमस्कार व्यूअर्स आई डॉक्टर रेनु तोमर वेलकम यू टू सी ई सी गुरुकुल लाइ लेक्चर्स फ्रेंड्स इफ यू रिमेंबर दैट इन अवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स वी हैव बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट वेरियस पॉलिसीज विच हैव कम विच हैव बीन एडोप्टेड बाय इंडिया इन इट्स आफ्टर प्री इंडिपेंड आफ्टर इंडिपेंडेंस एंड वट काइंड ऑफ इम्पैक्ट डिड इट हैव इन एजुकेशन सिस्टम इन इंडिया सो फ्रेंड्स आई again welcome you to the series of lecture on policies in indian education specifically in the context of school education friends if you remember in our last lecture we talked about kothari commission we talked about that how elaborative kothari commission was kothari commission which is known for structuralization of education system it was the one which advocated the education system in the form of 10 plus 2 plus 3 kothari commission was responsible for defining that what should be the age for admission in class 1 what kind of medium of instructions should be advocated in schools how public examinations are to be decided and how hindi and english are to be taught throughout the nation so friends from there on we will continue to npe 1986 npe 1986 the kothari commission was basically trying to advocate that how primary and pre primary education should be looked upon in fact it took, it went to the extent of structuralization of pre primary education then the primary education and the higher education as well in fact it also gave the curriculum so 1986 which was a step forward to the kothari commission and it had encompassed quite many ideas and quite many advocacies which have been put forth by kothari commission in its policy uh, friends let, now let us talk about 1986 1986 in may 1986 a new national policy on education was introduced friends it's almost 34 years since 1986 was introduced and in 2020 we have come with a new education policy in 2020 so from here on we will also try to understand that what kind of role npe 1986 played as far as education system in india is concerned particularly the school education system in india and from there on in our next lecture we will try to understand how nep 2020 is different from the previous education policy how we can say that it will have an impact in future on the education system in india so friends uh, to talk about np 1986 it was specifically centered around few things one it was emphasizing on the removal of disparities equal education opportunity was enter at the center of np 1986 it was trying to take care of the fact that the social disparities should be removed with the help of education secondly it also aimed at introducing technological revolution in india through education so uh, from here on what we can conclude is that the main objective of this policy was to provide equivalent opportunity to all including women st and sc communities and uh, because it was trying to introduce the secularism it was trying to introduce constitutional obligations so it also tried to center itself in reviving the hist- history in india so the common core which was of 1986 was inclusive of india's freedom movement in history books and constitutional obligations and other content were introduced keeping in view the fact that the indians should be looking upon india in the secular manner and the india's common cultural heritage agglutinism democracy secularism equality of sexes protection of environment and inculcation of scientific temper should be advocated through np 1986 so this being at the center it was advocated through books the curriculum was framed accordingly the history was oriented accordingly 
the equality of sexes was kept in the center apart from that it was also taken care of that the secular environment is introduced through the history books and protection of environment is introduced through the geography books or as well as the science books. Friends, what are the salient feature of this policy? The salient feature of this policy was common educational structure. Friends, as we discussed in initially that Kothari Commission was the one which introduced common educational structure and NP 1986 took up that particular structuralization from Kothari Commission and advocated the same. National curricular framework with the 10 common core element was introduced and equal educational opportunities for all was at the center of it. Another important aspect of NP 1986 is that it worked upon promoting adult education. The NP 1986 was not only advocating education for kids but also trying to cater to the non-formal education system and non-formal education was advocated to nation at the nationwide level. For that scientific and technological uh, tools were used and scientific and technological developments in education were also talked about and they were they were used to the maximum. Friends as we said that the non-formal education became very important due to NPE 1986 that is why operation blackboard for UE became very important. Operation blackboard friends if you remember was basically aimed at taking care of the dropout cases dropout cases of the formal education system through non-formal education system and informal education system the NP 1986 advocated to deal with the, the illiteracy in India. So, illiteracy was to be fought in the formal sector, illiteracy was to be fought in the informal sector and illiteracy was to be fought in the non-formal sector. That is why we also said that the one of the salient feature of NP 1986 was promotion of adult education. Friends, Navodya Vidyalays were introduced as a result of 1986. All of us are aware of what Navodya Vidyalayas are as well as we know what are the mission of Navodya Vidyalayas. Navodya Vidyalayas were kept uh, as some some entity as an entity they were different from the other government organization because they talked about complete involvement of teaching and student community in the education system. So, usually in Avodhya Vidyalayas it was at the center that the students should become uh, very much involved in the education system and the literacy should not be the only agenda as far as education system the school education system is concerned students should be uh, should be trained to become more responsible they should be trained and equipped as far as other skills are concerned extracurricular activities are also emphasized so uh, we can say from here on we can conclude that vocationalization of education was one of an agenda to, uh, okay, to introduce this salient features the ITI were strengthened and from there on the vocationalization of education was introduced. Another important feature which was also there in the Kothari commission was that raising the status of the teacher. Friends if you remember that in Kothari commission there was a task force who which was responsible for studying as well as recommending that how the status of the teacher can be raised. So, it uh, from there on the NP 1986 took the literature as well as their analysis was utilized as to uh, incorporate that how the status of the teacher can be improved. NP 1986 also aimed at creating awareness about social, economic, culture and environmental issues. How can education create awareness about social, economic, cultural, environmental issues? For this, all we need is to look back in our social sciences books. If friends, in the social sciences book, we have uh, we have uh, geography as to make students aware that 
how colorful India is as far as its geographical uh, situation is concerned. It has all the climates, it has very diverse features. You, whatever feature we talk about, with India has. If we talk about that deserts, we do have. We talk about mountains, we do have. If we talk about oceans and seas, that also we do have. So, India has geographically very diverse features and that is why we usually say that India is integrity of those diverse features. Socially also if we see India is completely different. If we will have a look at the other nations in the world, India stands at a different level. Reason being we have so many languages which are spoken in India, we have so many religions which are followed in India. Despite that we are bound by one feature which is constitution and we are bound by a feature which has been introduced through the constitution that is secularism. Respect for everyone, respect for nature, respect for environment. So, those were the things which were introduced through the books to the students so that they realize how we are different and they can be proud of their diversity. They can be proud of the social diversity, they can be proud of economic diversity, they can be proud of their cultural diversity as well as environmental issues. Friends, to talk about the environmental issues, all of us are aware that the environment needs attention and that too urgent attention of everyone. May it be the students, may it be the adults, may it be the leaders and may it be any and a common man because environment has been utilized by humans to such an extent that we would say that it has been exploited, exploited to such an extent that the day is not very far off when our environment will stop or will reverse to such an extent that our survival will become different. So, for, for our own survival, it is very important that we introduce environmental issues to our children and make them aware that how and why disasters are coming, how they are to be dealt and what kind of options are available with us to deal with those environmental issues. We need to make our children aware as well as equipped with dealing with environmental issues. Friends, another salient feature of NPE was that it was children centered approach. Children centered approach and operational blackboard, they were the two main, main uh, agendas which were covered by NPE 1986. How can education be child centered? To make education child centered, it is very important that education is as per the interest of the child. So, that is why in NP 1986, it was advocated that the child has to be involved more. The child should be involved by inculcating the research in the school education area. And to to make it more interesting, we should introduce the activities which are children centric. We should be utilizing more teaching aids. There was also emphasis on laboratories, science laboratories and mathematics laboratories. They were emphasized that the children should be practically doing things as to have the better understanding of the concepts. And if they would be doing things, then naturally the concepts will be more clear as well as they would be interested in education system. So, this was one of a prime salient feature which was covered in NPE 1986. Education system was made more accountable. How was it made accountable? The teachers were made accountable and 
it was uh, it was made mandatory that the dropout rate should be controlled and to control dropout rate there are two important things which are to be done one that education should be interesting as well as of functional value to children and his their families another important thing was that the people at large the parents the society the community should become more aware they should be enlightened to the fact that the education is important to them as a family education is important for the child what kind of benefits education will yield as far as family is concerned and the individual is concerned that should be at the center and that should be advocated more strongly and purposefully only then we can say that the education is becoming accountable friends now let us talk about that how status and emoluments of education of teachers was centered upon in np 1986 as to give the status and respect to the teachers and protect their academic freedom it was ensured that satisfactory emoluments and satisfactory service conditions are provided to the teachers it was also emphasized that the teacher education particularly in service teacher education uh, should become should be strengthened that means the teachers who have been teaching in the schools for years they should be going for in service teacher education for equipping them with various new tools which they were not aware when they entered the service so by advocating in service teacher and p 1986 tried to manifest that the teacher education becomes more uh, equipped in dealing with the present scenario and it should have more uh, understanding of the students as well as the their needs and that can only be done by introducing in service teaching edu teacher education programs so that was something which was manifested upon another feature which we talked about when we talked about np 1986 was that it was promoting equality and equity uh, how equality and equity can be promoted to promote equality and equity it is very important that equal opportunity is given to everyone and friends when we talk about equity which is more important than equality to ensure that the scholarships are given to sc st and the women the girl students so that they find education uh, system uh, interesting for them and the families because of those scholarship because of that monetary benefits and mid day meal they may lure more girls and more students from the community scst communities to the schools so that they can also have access to the education system that was the condition of success for the education system so equality was promoted through Uh, through inviting uh, providing scholarship to the students through introducing ue uh, by operation blackboard becoming a very important feature and of course also through core curriculum through core curriculum it was advocated that the that the students and the people do well in life and that is irrespective of the gender irrespective of the caste irrespective of the community so by giving such examples in the history by introducing such people through the literature the students were enlightened to the fact that even the girls can do better in life if they are educated similarly the downtrodden communities which have not does not have access to the education they were made aware that the education can strengthen them and can uh, make them rise as far as their social status is concerned friends from here on let us talk about uh, 1992 what was 1992 friends 1992 was basically uh, a poa uh, plan of action and it was more or less 
similar to the 1986 policy only. Here, the, uh, when the POA 1992 was written, universal access and environment enrollment was kept at center. The, it was emphasized the three, res, three aspects which were thrusted upon in elementary education was universal access and enrollment. That means, it was responsibility of the education system to ensure that each child was there in the formal setup and if the child is unable is not able to be part of the formal setup then it was required that we made efforts to keep them in that in that sector for that it was made mandatory that the admission of the child would be taken by any school and even if the documents were not there with the child then also it will be taken care of that the children are children are registered in the school and enrolled in the school. As the universal retention of children up to the 14 year of age was made a uh, policy as well as it was a there was a legal provisions added to it. So, it was very important that every parent has to uh, has to have their children in school till they were 14 years of age. So, as this was made mandatory it became responsibility of the society that it became responsibility of the parents it became responsibility of the education sector to ensure that the children would remain in the school till they were 14 years of age. A substantial improvement in the quality of education to enable all children to achieve essential level of learning was also advocated as far as uh, the elementary education is concerned the new thrust in elementary education is con concerned. So, this was the third aspect which was emphasized in elementary education first was universal access and enrollment second was universal retention of children up to the 14 years of age and third was uh, improvement in the quality of education to enable all children to achieve essential level of learning. What were the areas of concern as we already talked about child centered approach and operational background uh, blackboard. Child centered approach we have already discussed. Let us talk about operational blackboard. The scope of operational blackboard was enlarged to provide three reasonably large rooms with other necessary learning aids and school library and at least three teachers. So, operational blackboard was made not just uh, uh, a nationwide feature, but also the scope was also enlarged. Non-formal education in, uh, in uh, POA 1992 was advocating that the school dropouts, working children or girls who could not attend whole day schools are to be ensured that they become part of the non-formal education. They are sent to the school and they are made to remain in the school. So, effective steps were taken to provide a framework for the curriculum on the line of national core curriculum based upon the needs of the learner and related to local environment. Government was to take the complete responsibility. Friends, uh, let us also talk about that uh, how decentralization of education which was advocated and done also also played a very important role in uh, UE. Uh, voluntary ag agencies and Panchayati Raj institutions were given the responsibility of running non-formal education program. As grassroots level as well as non-formal organizations were given the responsibility of running non-formal education program that led to improvement in success rate as far as non-formal education is concerned. To further uh, talk about POA 1992 or NP 1986, it was ensured that free and compulsory education is given to children up to the 14 years of age and uh, it was also kept in mind that the literacy level would be 100 percent before we enter the 21st century and all of us know that hardly happened and we are still struggling with having the 100 percent literacy. To ensure that we have the 100 percent literacy, the elementary stage was given more importance 
as kothari commission uh, we have already discussed in kothari commission that the uh, the school system was broken into 5 plus 3 plus 2 five was the primary education three was the higher education and then two was the secondary education so first to five then six to eight and then nine uh, six to eight six seven eight and then nine ten eleven twelve those four system that was the system which was advocated by kothari commission and usually it is termed as 10 plus 2 because uh, 5 plus 3 plus 2 is covered in the, in the 10 years of education system so this break up of 10 years was uh, taken care of in poa 1992 when the elementary system was to be comprised of 5 years then the primary education was to comprise of 3 years and the upper primary was followed by 2 years of higher education 5 plus 3 plus 2 was the system which was advocated for the 10 years and plus 2 was the senior secondary level uh, which was given by Kothari commission it was on the same lines. Friends let us also touch upon NCF, NCF is very important from the point of view of the fact that it advocated uh, importance of practical training in education system. Friends particularly I would like to talk about NCF 2005 which was under the leadership of Professor Yeshpal. Friends, if you remember in NCF, the basic agenda was that the education has lost creativity, it has lost interest for the students because educational experience is not child centered, rather it is more of a lecture method. So, NCF as a document advocated on four issues which were that the education purpose need to be reviewed, educational experience need to be reviewed and experience is need to be organized, experience of the students and learners are to be assessed in a different manner. Friends to talk about NCF 2005, it was basically to remove ills of present education system, inflexibility of school practices and learning becoming an isolated activity than life. So, uh, from this point what we can gather is and this was something which was talked by NCF 2005 again and again that learning rather the rote memory is something which is advocated by the education system and the result is that the students are not able to correlate life with the learning mechanism which they have introduced the learning which they have received in the school. So, uh, it was advocated that the school should be encouraging more creative thinking, the personality of the child should be at the center of education system and uh, present of the child should be more important than the future of the child because the education system was usually talking about how the child has to be made uh, skilled for the future, how the child has to become good citizen for the future rather than talking about how interesting education system is for the child, how happy the child is in the school. These were the basic questions which were questioned by NCF 2005 and the answer was no, the child is not happy in the present education system. To answer that uh, as we uh, uh, as we discussed that the national steering committee was set up and there were 21 national focus groups we will not go into the detail of all focus groups but the main focus groups were teaching english teaching science teaching social sciences maths and educational technology and after having discussing and passed in cape on 7th of september 2005 it came into the uh, it came into the, it was introduced to the education system to practice it. Uh, how was it different from the existing system? The traditional system as per as far as NCF curricular areas were concerned, they said that the traditional system was limited to mathematics, language, science and social science. But they said the other areas which need to be introduced are art education, health and physical education, education for peace, habitat and learning. It also talked about reorienting our perception to the learner and learning and introducing child centered 
pedagogy. Holistic approach to the learner development was something which was at the center of NCF 2005. It talked about connecting knowledge across boundaries. If you remember in NCF, we said social sciences is also a sciences. It has to be seen from the perspective of sciences and we should be able to understand how physics can become an important component as to understand geography. Similarly, to understand our history, we, we can utilize literature. So, inclusive environment in class for all was at the center as far as NCF 2005 is concerned. Systematic reform was introduced by evolving common school system and professionalizing teaching and uh, introducing reflective practices. So, locally planned flexible school calendars and timetable and providing minimum infrastructure facilities for betting better teacher, they were the reforms which were introduced through NCF 2005. Exams were introduced to be of the shorter duration and open ended questions were to be asked rather than having more of an objective question because it was to be introduced that the students become more questioning. If they will question more, they will try to experiment more, they will try to find out more and that was taken to be a mission of education and the vision of education. So, what was the uh, as far as NCF 2005 is concerned, the teachers were meant to guide and counsel and uh, for making children think more, question more, understand more as well as to equip the schools as to deal with the adolescent issues, guidance and counseling was to be made mandatory part of the school. So, friends, these were the steps uh, we have discussed all the policies as well as NCF which have played major role in the existing education system. We shall meet in our next lecture as to discuss NEP 2020. Friends, I take your leave. Namaskar and take care.